Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Black Ops 2 In-Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the M27 Assault Rifle. On its surface, this weapon seems simple enough. However, when you start taking a look at its core components and statistics, you'll notice that this is a weapon of extremes. Some of its components are extremely overpowered and ridiculously dangerous, and some of its components are so extremely underpowered, it's laughable as to why those were even implemented into the game. Without teasing you all anymore, we're going to start with some of the more underpowered parts, that being the damage. This is the lowest damage assault rifle in Black Ops 2, dealing 33 damage per shot and dropping off to 22 damage per shot at a distance. This means that it will take between 3 and 5 shots to kill, depending on your range, and the headshot multiplier is only 1.1x, meaning that you only get 10% damage for each headshot. If you'll notice, that's 10% uh, of 33 doesn't make you kill any faster, however 10% of 22 will, and it has an intermediate damage of 30. So headshots are only useful after 12 meters. I'm skipping ahead a little bit because of the range. Close range headshots will not kill any any faster with the M27, so in close quarters combat you should always aim for the center mass of the body. However, at longer ranges, headshots can make your four shot kill into a three shot kill or your five into a four shot kill, so they are useful. The normal four shot kill range, as long as you're hitting somebody in the body, is 12 meters. This is pretty normal for assault rifles, nothing very special going on here. The five shot kill range is 37 meters, and again, that's pretty normal. The range isn't particularly special, but do bear in mind these are low damages over those ranges. The rate of fire is 750 RPM in fully automatic mode. This is close to average for assault rifles in Black Ops 2, maybe a smidge below average, but fairly normal, nothing particularly special going on about that. And as you've noticed, those are some very weak statistics. There's nothing very impressive going on with M27. It would make a lot of people want to avoid it based on that. And here comes another big bad one. The time to kill. It is the slowest killing assault rifle in Black Ops 2. There are no assault rifles that kill slower uh, on average. There are some that will kill slower up close because they're a burst fire weapon or really far away because they shoot slower. But on average across most ranges you'll find that the M27 is the slowest killing assault rifle and you'll find that you have a very hard time killing people up close close with it. Those are all the bad things about this assault rifle. I've hated on it a lot in the beginning. However, it has one extremely overpowered redeeming attribute, and that's that its recoil is extremely, extremely low. I cannot stress this enough. The recoil is comparable, if not uh, less than, the Modern Warfare 2 ACR. Of all of the assault rifles in Black Ops 2, and honestly of all the fully automatic weapons in Black Ops 2, this one has the lowest recoil. It is extremely, extremely accurate. It is a death laser at all ranges. Do not underestimate the recoil on this weapon. It is super easy to control, super easy to master. You can spray and pray. Shooting it in burst is absolutely no different than shooting it in fully automatic mode. I'm not the biggest fan of the iron sights, but they are still quite usable. The foresight is very nice. It's a very thin uh, vertical bar that has a little dot on the top that allows me to target enemies easily. However, the hind sights are a little bit bulky and they obscure a little bit too much of my vision when I'm aiming down sights. It mostly messes me up at medium range. Close range is easy, long range is still easy, but my medium range combat with M27 iron sights is a little bit lacking. They're definitely still usable. I use them a lot. You've probably seen some gameplay clips with them already, but I prefer optics. If I have the space in my classes, I'm going to put some some kind of optics on this weapon. The optics that I prefer are long-ranged optics. I like the ACOG sight, I like the EOTech sight, I like the target finder sight, I like the hybrid sight. It just kind of depended on what was floating my boat for that particular map and my fancy. I did not like the red dot sight, but I liked all of the ones that had some level of magnification because this feels like a longer-ranged weapon to me and I kind of like my longer-range zoom sights. The M27 is also quite strong when it comes to reload time. If you still have at least one bullet in your chamber, it takes 1.95 seconds to go through the full reload animation. It'll be a little bit slower than that if you have to chamber around. The reload cancel time, which uh, is the time that you can sprint forward after you've kind of jammed your mag in the gun and cancel the reload and do it a little bit faster, is 1.32 seconds. This is the same speed as the AN94 reload, which I happen to like. It's very easy to reload, cancel, and save yourself about half a second. This is not the fastest reloading assault rifle, but it is up there in the very top of the bunch. Uh, knife and run speeds are pretty standard, 1.22 seconds for the knife and 95% run speed, nothing special going on there. And we've talked about these raise and drop and ADS in and out times so often I don't even want to touch on them again. They're very normal, same as the rest of all the assault rifles, and it also has a very average hip fire. Statistically speaking, very average, same as all the assault rifles, nothing special going on here, but not as good as a submachine gun. Magazine count, again, very normal. 30 rounds in the magazine, you slap extended mags on it, goes up to 40. Nothing particularly special about that, but I 
should mention that since this is a low damage weapon and it takes a lot of shots to kill that you'll burn through your magazine extremely quickly. You're going to be reloading a lot with this weapon because it's usually going to take at least four to five shots to kill, not including the ones that you've missed. At the end of the day, the M27 is a statistically awful weapon. It has low damage, average range, a little bit less than that on the rate of fire, very slow time to kill, very awful in those damage and range statistics, but it is extremely accurate. This is the death laser of Black Ops 2. It's the, it's the Black Ops 1 Scorpion, it's the MW2 ACR. It has essentially no recoil, super easy to spray, easy to use with any kind of sight at any range, and that is its redeeming quality. That was the balancing factor. They wanted a very accurate assault rifle, but if you made the accurate assault rifle have high damage it would easily be overpowered so if you're gonna have a very accurate assault rifle it should do very low damage to maintain some balance and I can objectively say that the M27 is a good gun that I personally am not good with this is something of a subjective ending for in-depth which I do try to avoid but I could not find a good recommended class for this weapon I preferred it with lightweight I preferred it with stock and grip but then again I also liked it with various optics I liked it with fast mags I liked it with suppressor I liked it a lot of different kind of ways and I couldn't find a class that suited me best or a class that suited the weapon best and I think that's just as good because the M27 is a very general weapon it's a very rough and tumble kind of assault rifle there aren't any bad attachments for it. There are no attachments you can put on the M27 that are not good, so I don't necessarily think this is a bad thing. Actually, you know, you could probably just run a stock M27 with no attachments and save for more perks or more grenades or more of whatever you want, and it would be just as good. So I say the M27, very good gun, don't undersell it, extremely accurate, but I'm not good with it. Me personally, you won't see me using it very often. At the end of this in-depth episode, I would again like to take a second to talk about my health. I probably should have never mentioned it because now uh, every in-depth episode is going to include a health update because everybody wants to know. Yesterday I was uh, facing blindness. It was a very unpleasant thing. I got a diagnosis from the CT scan technician. He told me what was wrong, but he couldn't make a prognosis. So I got on Google and looked some things up and my problem looked uh, nightmarish. It looked like I was on the slow track to blindness and that I was absolutely going to be blind in you know a couple of years. I went to the eye doctor and he did a lot of tests on me. I hope he didn't smell the, the vomit in my mouth because I had to hold back from throwing up when I first heard the news. And he said that I'm actually going to be okay, that the problem I have is exceedingly rare, and that the blindness complications from it are also exceedingly rare, and that he's never even actually seen a patient suffer from complications. It's so rare. And uh, I would like to just say that Google is a terrible doctor. Never Google your medical problems. It, it will just scare you. Go see an actual medical doctor, and that right now I seem to be okay. I still don't know why I can't remember anything or why I can't spell, but uh, at least I'm not going to go blind, which is a major relief. If you'd like to check out the previous episode of In-Depth, you can check out the SCAR H and click the box on the left. That'll open in a new window. The next episode of In-Depth, I'm going to be talking about an iPhone app with Brass Monkey. He made the Black Ops 2 Ultimate Utility. You can click the box on the right when that goes live. And as always, if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.